Good evening. We may never know how emails from the world-renowned Climatic Research Unit of the University of East Anglia ended up posted on a site run by climate change sceptics. But with the countdown to the Copenhagen summit now being ticked off in days, their impact is clearly expected to be significant, especially since the sceptics have seized upon some incendiary words. Is it possible scientists have been playing fast and loose with the facts, or are they simply guilty of naivety? Our science editor, Susan Watts, reports. This is about as scandalous as it gets in climate science. Just weeks before the Copenhagen talks, hackers apparently break into a UK university department, dump thousands of emails, apparently on a Russian server, sparking allegations that climate scientists are attempting to pull the wool over everybody's eyes. The climate skeptic blogosphere has seized upon the email exchanges, saying they're apparent admissions of cooking the books and calling this climate gate. They point to requests to delete email correspondence and apparent attempts to keep raw temperature data away from the public. One email from the director of the University of East Anglia's climatic research unit, Phil Jones, has attracted most comment. It talks about using Mike's nature trick to hide the decline. Climate skeptic websites see this as evidence of underhand practice. Jones himself says he used the word trick in the science journal Nature colloquially, as in a clever thing to do, and that it's ludicrous to suggest that it refers to anything untoward. So why does any of this matter? Climate science is now at the heart of policy, and that policy means big changes in the way we live to move to a low carbon economy and large amounts of money to be spent by government, by business and ultimately by taxpayers. So people will want to know, can we trust the science? There are scientists who have quibbled for years with some of the data. Fred Singer says satellite data paints a different picture to the mainstream view. He sees the emails as potentially damaging. It suggests fraud and uh messing with data and I think it will have a strong influence on the credibility of the science that's used to support the politicians view that we must control carbon dioxide. In spite of these emails the majority scientific view backed by computer modeling remains that the earth is warming in response to rising concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But that doesn't mean that there is never any difference in outcome from individual models. Some climate models have suggested we may be in for a couple of decades of cooling. Others, like this one here at the Met Office, disagree. So no wonder people can be confused about what's going on and who to believe. But this apparent discrepancy may not be as big a problem as it appears. Making sense of each of the individual elements of our climate like the oceans and the wind is one thing, but to get the really big picture, you have to start to understand how they all work together. And that's when you really appreciate the true scale of the problem. It's easy to understand that by just looking at the weather. I mean, today we, we have clouds that have scales of maybe a few kilometers. Um, they're being blown into us by a weather system which itself has a scale of a thousand or several thousand kilometers. The weather systems themselves are being blown across the Atlantic by the jet streams, the strong wind streams in the upper atmosphere, which have scales of tens of thousands of kilometers. And then the whole weather systems are being modulated by the currents and temperatures in the oceans across the world. And we have to get all of this complexity into a single uh, computer model of, of the climate system. So scales varying from tens of thousands of kilometers down to individual kilometer systems. Tim Palmer has a new job at Oxford University to quantify uncertainty in weather and climate predictions. He says we shouldn't pay too much attention to individual cool years, or even the current decade of cooler years. So we can think of climate a little bit like this random pile of shells. Uh, we can think of the white shells as warm years and the black shells as cold years. And in the 20th century, we had a roughly an equal distribution of, of black shells and white shells. There was an equal chance of a warm year or a cold year. But with increasing levels of carbon dioxide, we're just gradually getting rid of these cold years, gradually getting rid of the black shells. And year upon year, these black shells are decreasing. And every time they decrease, it increases the chances of, of picking up a white shell or a, warm, or a warm year. And eventually, you know, there'll be almost none of these left. 
and the climate will be dominated by the warm years. But still there's a chance that next year might be a cold year, but that shouldn't de detract us in any way from the fact that the climate is radically changing. The statistics of the weather patterns have radically changed. Many climate scientists are dismissing this email leak as a schoolboy prank designed to destabilize politicians ahead of the Copenhagen talks. But those skeptical of climate science say it shows collusion to make the case for climate change. The question is who the public will choose to trust. Some say the leak threatens to tarnish British science. One climate change skeptic who used to work here wants further investigation. Are these emails genuine? It looks as if they are, but are they genuine? That's the first thing. If they are genuine, uh, what has been going on in, in the sense of uh, uh, changing the figures, in the sense of uh, refusing to reveal information, uh, not allowing Freedom of Information Act requests, and trying to stop the publication of uh, articles by dissenting scientists. Those are all very serious matters. They may have a good answer. I'm not prejudging it. But there certainly needs to be a rigorous independent inquiry. Bob Watson is Professor of Environmental Sciences at the University of East Anglia, or UEA, where the leaked emails originated. The UEA, I believe, will strongly support an independent inquiry, both into the illegal act of hacking into the computer and effectively to analyse all of the data to show there's been absolutely no manipulation of the data and the results are indeed valid. His is the view of most climate scientists who say it's not hard to dip into emails and select excerpts to look like a conspiracy. But in this particular dispute, just about the only thing that both sides agree on is that a truly independent inquiry is all that will now clear the air.